Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Uh, today I'm making these uh, very colorful figments of imagination. Now, don't you like how I carefully planned where the eye on this guy was going to go and just that little pop of yellow on his tail? Aren't you so impressed with my powers of planning and precision? Well, if you are, I'm going to hate to break it to you. There wasn't any planning. There wasn't any precision in this. It was all thanks to using a stencil and a mask. And you're going to see how in this video. I'm adding paint randomly to this piece of paper that's on my counter. Now I keep big pieces of paper on my counter just for this purpose. It had some paint on it that was left over from something else. And now I'm just adding to it. Now, is there deep thought going on here? Am I figuring out exactly what this is going to look like in the end? Absolutely not for me. I love to work without a plan because, well, that's just a lot less pressure for me and I can just get lost in the fun and the play here. I'm just going to keep adding layers to this until it's really busy and wonderfully colorful or I run out of time. Well, here's what it looks like completely dry. It's loaded up with lots of layers of color here and I'm going to use it with a stencil. It's going to become these wonderful, colorful creatures and critters. This is my Figments of Imagination stencil from over at Stencil Girl Products, and it includes both the stencil there as well as all of the masks for each one of the critters. So it's a stencil and mask set. So you get things like this, like there's the bunny rabbit one, and it perfectly lines up because it, well, it comes from that. So I've got all those pieces, and I'm going to be able to use both the mask and the stencil together to make this really easy to find exactly what colorful critters I want on here. So just by placing the stencil around in different places, I can see what that bunny rabbit is going to look like when I'm done with the mask. So it's a great way to audition and test things out. It takes the guesswork out. So like that circle for the eye up there for the bunny and what color I want the tail to be, it's a lot easier to do that if you have the stencil to go with the mask. So once I've got it where I want it, then I'm going to put the mask in place. Now I want everything to stay in place, so I'm going to use that fancy technique of a piece of tape to hold that mask in place. Now I know where I want the bunny to go because the stencil's right there. So I'm going to hold the stencil still and I'm going to put the mask on top of it, very much like fitting jigsaw puzzle pieces together. Once I've got it, and of course if it's not exactly where I want it, if I've wiggled it around a little bit, if I want to change where the eyeball and the tail are going, I have that flexibility because these two things are working together. If I was just putting the mask down, I'd be doing a little more guessing. Basically, it's a lot easier for me to see where it's going to be when I've got the stencil there to kind of frame it, audition places, and then I put the mask on top. Now I'm going to make that bunny stand out and come to life here by putting black paint all around that mask. What I'm going to be left with is one very rainbow happy critter underneath. Now as I'm doing this, I am using the very glamorous, very exclusive cosmetic sponge from a drugstore and I am just pouncing that paint on there in an up and down motion. Now the thicker your paint or the drier it is, the less careful you have to be. If you use a lot of paint or a really runny or wet paint, you gotta really be careful, maybe pounce a lot of it off, make sure you go in that up and down motion if you don't want paint to run underneath your stencil. And once I've got it fully surrounded in that black, I am going to lift that mask off to see what I've got underneath. Although really, I pretty much know what it is because that's what the stencil helped me figure out in the beginning when I was auditioning. So see how I've got the eyeball for the bunny rabbit in just the right place and I've got that little bit of yellow on the tail? That was only possible because I was using that stencil to help me find these things. If I just slapped the mask down, I probably wouldn't have been able to line that up nearly as well. Well, now that I found one critter in here, uh, let's find some more. So I'm going to audition some more areas this using the stencil again. Exact same process. Now I'm going to put the black around it, but this time I'm going to put a lot more black around it. I'm going to fill in the entire area around it so that when I cut it out, it looks like that most of that background is gone. I'm going to leave a little bit peeking around the edge for fun. But you can see how by doing this, it looks like I did all this careful thought to make this colorful critter when really, nope, this was all random fun and play. Now this big piece of paper has room for boatloads of these critters, so I'm going to keep looking around on this for more of them, exact same technique, and seeing what comes to life from this piece of paper. 
Oh, and by the way, this is the large Figments of Imagination stencil. There is also a six by six size, and that one also includes the masks too. Now, remember how I said on the edges, I was gonna leave that little bit of color peeking out? Well, as my prerogative, I changed my mind. I decided I wanted to color those up, or cover those up, and so I'm just adding some black around the edges. That way they become completely black, except for where those critters are. So now what am I gonna do with these? Am I gonna make cards out of these? What a fun set these would make to make a complete gift for somebody. Or are these gonna end up as a silly art journal page? Or am I gonna frame each one and make a fun statement on the wall? I'm not sure yet, I haven't quite decided, but you bet I'll let you know whatever I decide. And yep, the video camera will probably be rolling. So if you wanna make sure that you don't miss that video, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. And of course, head on over to my blog at acolorfuljourney.com for more fun and play, including a free workshop called Permission to Play. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey. 